I'm Alan Lytle for 91.3 WUKY, where it is time for another edition of Saving Stories with Dr. Doug Boyd from the Louis B. Nunn Center for Oral History in the UK Libraries. It's a segment where we feature interviews from the collection. Good day to you, Doug. It's good to be here. Doug, this week marks an important milestone in the official legalization of gay marriage in all 50 states. It was 2015 when the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in Obergefell versus Hodges in favor of marriage equality essentially making legal recognition of same-sex marriage the law of the land. But few people realize that significant roots of this landmark decision had Kentucky origins. The case that led to the Supreme Court decision out of Kentucky was Bork versus Bashir. And this is the 10th anniversary of that court decision. The judge who ruled in favor of the same-sex couples out of Kentucky was John G. Habern II. The Nunn Center works very closely with the John G. Habern II Initiative for Excellence in the Federal Judiciary, an archivist Anu Kasarabata, who has conducted numerous oral history interviews documenting this case and Judge Habern's ruling. Okay, so this is a little complicated, so set the stage. We're featuring two of the same-sex couples in the Bork versus Bashir case, Kim Franklin and Tamara Boyd, as well as Greg Bork and Michael DeLeon. Until 2015, same-sex couples in Kentucky did not have the same rights, responsibilities, privileges as straight couples. So for a bit of context, go back to 2004. Kentucky voters approved an amendment to the state constitution that basically said that Kentucky did not have to recognize same-sex marriages that were being performed in other states. So both couples in Bork versus Bashir wanted to challenge Kentucky's stance on same-sex marriage. Here's an excerpt from our interview with Greg Bork, who frames their motivation for filing this case. I would say family was our motivation for filing the lawsuit. Uh, We have two adopted children. Kentucky's uh, laws do not allow non-married people to jointly adopt children. So when we adopted children in 1999 and 2000, we had to adopt those um, as single-parent adoptions. So Michael was the adoptive father for our two children, but because the Commonwealth of Kentucky did not recognize our legal marriage, they would not allow me to co-adopt the children. So I was not recognized legally as a parent for our children. So that was, um, that was our motivation for filing the lawsuit. I, we wanted to be able to provide our children with kind of that st- um, stability <clears throat> and to know that they have two parents. Um, So we wanted our kids, and we wanted other kids in Kentucky and really throughout the whole country who were in similar situations to be able to feel confident um, that, you know, they have legal parents and they have the same rights and protections that other kids have. Our kids didn't have that. So so we filed our lawsuit. That really was our our justification in our minds when we said, if we're going to do this, you know, this is why we should do it. The attorney on this case, Shannon Favre, she filed the case, described the process of filing briefs from both sides, going back and forth. Finally, it came time for Judge Habern to rule. On a side note, Judge Habern was not necessarily considered a liberal judge, but he was known for being thoughtful and fair in his rulings. Well, he ruled in favor of the same-sex couples and wrote what they describe in the interviews as a fairly emotional decision. Here is Kim Franklin and Tamara Boyd reflecting on Judge Habern's history-making decision. That still, you know, the Habern ruling is still, I think, yes. maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I think is one of the better written decisions in the whole process of the case. Just the way he put it out there that, you know, th- these people have this right. They're, they're not, they're, they just want to live their lives. And I don't remember his exact verbiage, but just basically that, Constitution gives them that right. They they don't want to hurt anybody. Their marriage doesn't affect yours, you know. And, and it just doesn't mean it takes away every gay marriage doesn't take away from a heterosexual, you know. Mm-hmm. He he is extremely supportive, and uh, in his words, he was just really emotional. Put it, he put him out there really emotional. So his. His ruling and his verbiage and the wording was wonderful, I think. There's so much more to this story, which is why Anu and I feature the long version in the latest episode of our podcast, The Wisdom Project. Yes, and you can get The Wisdom Project wherever you get your podcasts. Doug Boyd from the Louis B. Nunn Center for Oral History in the UK Libraries has been our guest again on Saving Stories. Have a good one. Thanks for having me.